YouTube is going to shut down my channel if I'm not careful. Andrew Tate was allegedly attacked in jail, but many are also shouting fake news about that. There was a coup attempt in Brazil while Bolsonaro's just mulling around at a Publix. A six-year-old shot a teacher on purpose. We're going to be talking about all of that and so much more on the first Philip DeFranco show of 2023. So buckle up, hit that like button if you miss this show, and let's just jump into it. Starting with uh, actually a quick apology from me to you. Before we went on our New Year break, I said the show was coming back January 2nd, but of course that didn't end up happening, and that's because I got my wisdom teeth taken out. I foolishly thought, that's not a big deal. What, that you do it, they give you ice cream or something? Turns out that's tonsils. I'm an idiot. And they were a little worried about me healing as fast because I was getting this done at 37 rather than like 18 or 20 when a lot of people get that done. And honestly, I am glad I took their advice and took the extra week off. I'm feeling much better now. I would have been miserable last week. Also, yes, they did let me keep my teeth and a lot of people have asked to see them. So for you weirdos, stay after the goodbye on today's show and I'll show them to you because once again, you're weird. Also, they've been exposed to air now. They look kind of gnarly. Anyway, I've warned you enough. Moving on. And then, Andrew Tate may have been hospitalized while in jail. And this reportedly not because Greta Thunberg put him in the burn unit. But also, looking into this, there's a reason to be skeptical about this news and narrative. So the first thing I'll say is, with all this Tate news, do not just take everything at face value. While this whole situation popped off while the show was on break, one thing that I noticed is there was just so much misinformation going around. There were claims that Tate wasn't being investigated for heavier charges. It was just like money laundering. Also, there were claims that he was actually released from jail. With people sharing old, unrelated videos that they were saying, oh, this is him now. But that said, Let's walk through this. Right, so Andrew and his brother Tristan were both detained a little over a week ago in Romania as part of a rape and sex trafficking investigation. They're being accused of leading victims to believe that they were interested in dating them, but instead taking them to houses where they were constantly surveilled and then forced to act in pornographic videos that were then sold online. And while both brothers are still in custody, Andrew Tate's Twitter account has continued to post various updates and nuggets of top G wisdom. With yesterday, Tate's account saying, The Matrix has attacked me, but they misunderstand you cannot kill an idea. Hard to kill. And that post including a link to a Romanian news outlet called Spy News. With that report claiming that one of the Tate brothers was hospitalized. But key things. That report did not say which brother it was, just saying that the two were doing a routine medical visit, and one of the brothers allegedly informed the doctor of medical issues that he was suffering from, and those issues apparently necessitated a special consultation at a hospital. And while the report gave no further details about the medical issues, there was this whole narrative that, oh, Andrew Tate was attacked in prison, so now he's in a hospital. And then with that, you also saw reports saying, hey, the evidence that Andrew Tate was actually attacked, it's not really there. Personally, and maybe I'm fucking off base here, I don't think that he's speaking literally. Instead, to me, it sounds like the whole hospital thing might have been one of the brothers claiming or having a pre-existing condition. And as far as him saying the Matrix is attacking me, that's kind of just like the general thing that he's been saying that, that has been happening, not in reference to like a specific physical altercation. Right? And even today, the, the account continued saying the Matrix doesn't play fair, they play to win. But with that said, I, I do think the timing of this is potentially notable because it's being reported that the Tate brothers have an appeal hearing tomorrow. And by then, either nothing will happen, maybe we'll get some more information, or I mean, they could even be released. And in the meantime, we're going to keep our eyes on this and try and just sift through all the bullshit because once again, there's so much misinformation and conjecture and just random bullshit with this story. And then YouTube's about to firebomb my YouTube channel. That is what a number of people were telling me on Twitter while I was away on break. And as it turns out, uh, they weren't just trolling me, but they may be overly concerned. Let's let's, let's talk it out. Right, so this is a big story that's gotten a lot of attention over the last week and it involves fairly recent changes to YouTube's profanity policy. Specifically, if you look at the new ad guidelines under YouTube's help page, the rules regarding inappropriate language state that creators cannot receive ad revenue for videos with profanity in the thumbnail, title, or first seven seconds of the video. And there are even more details under gaming and monetization. And there, noting that not only will videos with profanity in the first seven seconds get demonetized, but so will videos with profanity throughout the majority of the video. And then there's also this kind of gray area for videos with this kind of language in the first eight to 15 seconds, where you may or may not be monetized. But then giving the green light for profanity used after 15 seconds, saying that it is fine and monetizable, again, as long as it does not happen throughout most of the video. And all of that has pissed off and freaked out a ton of creators, especially because many have claimed that this rule has been applied retroactively and tons of their old content is being hit now. RT Game, for example, saying at least a dozen of his videos were limited. He'd been dealing with videos both being age-restricted and demonetized, then posting a video over the weekend explaining more about the situation. And while there was a lot going on with his specific story, the, the TLDR here is that he contacted YouTube about this and they said, basically, there is a rule change. Sucks to suck. And saying they even told him that if he edited the profanity out of his videos, they would not regain monetization. All content at all times must abide by the current policy. But the content itself was made at a time when this policy did not exist. How is it in any way fair to retroactively enforce that? Right, so you could have done everything right, played by the rules all the time, and now it wouldn't matter if it doesn't fit the new policy. And I feel like I'm just watching my career slowly being sapped away powerless to do anything. You also have the likes of Moist Critical leading the charge on this, calling YouTube out, and saying that among other things, they haven't been transparent enough about these new rules. They're remaining silent on it, treating it like it's the Coca-Cola secret formula here. They're, for some reason, 
very apprehensive to tell people about this. Also saying that the new rules aren't clear, that they're not being enforced evenly. And with all this, pointing to rules regarding violence and gaming, right? Saying those have tightened up in a way that he thinks just is too limited. It is extremely strict. They are coming down very, very hard on anything that's not YouTube kids oriented, it feels like. I have never seen such strict enforcement of violent gaming videos. I swear to God, if you're playing a game where you're not giving kisses to the enemy to defeat them, you're probably gonna get demonetized for it now. And so all of this is also why people were messaging me saying, oh, well, you can't open the videos with sup, you beautiful bastards anymore. Also, some noting that uh, on certain stories, I tend to have a filthy, filthy whore mouth. And to that, I'll say uh, I am concerned about these changes, but also as, as far as it pertains to me, don't worry about me. I've been on the platform 15 years. There's a reason I have burned 10 sponsors in the show. YouTube monetization on my channel. Uh, let's just say, while we love it, we don't count on it. The thing that does suck, and YouTube always denies this, is it does feel like if you get demonetized, it does hurt you in, in how people find your video. But YouTube states that they're different systems. I just, uh, I'll just say it doesn't feel like it. But also, don't worry. You'll always be beautiful bastards to me. No one's gonna stop me calling you that. In the beginning of the, the Philip DeFranco shows have now, uh, naturally changed where I don't say bastard in the first 15 seconds, which is kind of lucky. But hey, if you're a creator, you should be monetizing with memberships or merch. I highly recommend fourthwall.com for that. If you need help with ad sales because you think YouTube's about to pick your pocket, uh, hit me up on my public email. Because whether it be YouTube or really any of these other social media platforms, you, you never know when the ground is gonna fall out from beneath you. It doesn't make it right, but you should be prepared. And then, for any of you focused on getting your business off the ground, creating a place to share your homemade goods, new favorite hobby, current obsession, or even a personal blog to get all those thoughts out of your head, I got a great solution for you thanks to today's fantastic sponsor, Squarespace. You know, I've been partnering with Squarespace for years now, and I have to say, it is so easy. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. And creating your beautiful new website with Squarespace's all-in-one platform has never been so simple. It's extremely intuitive and easy to use. And with their mobile-optimized websites, your content automatically adjusts so it looks great on any device. Plus, with Squarespace, you get access to all their marketing tools and analytics and their award-winning customer care team via email or live chat 24-7. So go check it out. See why so many others have loved it. See if it's right for you. And start your free trial today over at squarespace.com slash phil. When you realize you love it, make sure you enter an offer code phil to get 10% off your first purchase. And then, Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. That was a massive, long, drawn-out news that happened while the show was on break. It took 15 separate votes to actually get there. The whole thing just looked like chaos. A fight almost broke out on the floor, people were having to be held back. Meanwhile, you got Democrats doing like silly, goofy bullshit, like, oh look, I'm reading The Art of Not Giving a Fuck, or look, I'm eating popcorn. As if even a divided Republican Party could not do a lot of damage over the next two years. And I say actual damage because a number of people see McCarthy as a speaker in name only. As of recording, it's not exactly clear every specific thing McCarthy gave in on to the around 20 rogue Republicans that were dragging their feet on the vote, but a number of those are gonna start getting the spotlight as of today, committee assignments, rule changes. And there's a legit a question if McCarthy is going to get through what he wants or if the around 20 Republicans are just going to be able to control him. If they have such a narrow majority, five people could completely derail their entire agenda because Democrats aren't going to jump on board with a lot of the bullshit McCarthy's going to push. So you have people wondering, is the tail going to wag the dog here? And of the first two tests we're going to see here, uh, the first starts today. The House is set to vote on a rules package. And reportedly, some Republicans have expressed hesitation about approving the rules due to the still unknown concessions McCarthy must have granted the hardline faction to secure his speaker seat. But then the second has to do with the hard line in the sand for August. In 2021, Congress raised the debt ceiling by $2.5 trillion. But that's only expected to get us to August. So there's this concern that 5 to 20 hard right Republicans are going to hold the whole thing hostage because there's a belief that what they want and what other Republicans want aren't going to align. But hey, in the meantime, we're going to see uh, how much of a clown show this ends up being. Before uh, we all fully laugh at the situation, a reminder, we are in the clown car with them, at least for the 60% of you that uh, are from the states that watch this show. And then school shootings, while of course always heartbreaking, are really not shocking in America anymore. It's a really unfortunate reality, but this latest shooting is extra odd and also has way more unanswered questions than usual. Because the shooter, is six years old, with the police in Newport News, Virginia, detailing how this incident happened, saying the teacher and the boy were involved in some sort of altercation Friday afternoon in the first grade classroom, with the boy then shooting the teacher once in the chest with a handgun, and the police confirming that the shooting was not accidental. Now, the teacher suffered life-threatening injuries, but thankfully, due to an emergency plan that the school had in place, she received immediate medical care, and fantastically was listed as stable on Saturday afternoon. As far as the boy, he was taken into police custody on Friday, and no one really knows where to go from here, right? because a key thing here is that Virginia law prohibits a six 
six-year-old from being tried as an adult, but the minimum age to be sent to a juvenile prison is 11. So you have that massive question mark, as well as, you know, the question of how the fuck did a six-year-old get a gun in the first place? Also, police are saying this is not an accidental shooting. How did he know how to use it? And as of right now, there's not a ton of information because the police haven't identified the child or his parents. But as far as those parents or a legal guardian or whoever, they may face some legal trouble under Virginia law. Specifically, the one prohibiting guns being accessible to children under the age of 14 in a home. Also, with how strange this story was, I wanted to look a little further. What I found is that while school shootings are unfortunately way too common, they're very rarely committed by children this young, right? The, the K-12 school shooting database has compiled every incident of a firearm being discharged at a K-12 school property since 1970. And they know that there are only 16 incidents in those 50 plus years of a student under the age of 10 firing a gun at school. Even fewer at the age of six, though ideally the number is zero because what the fuck? But as far as where we are now, the, the school has closed for the week. You have the teacher remaining in stable condition. We should also hopefully have more information soon. You have the school and local police holding a press conference later this afternoon to answer community questions about the shooting. But of course, in the meantime, our, our thoughts, our hearts, our well wishes go out to the teacher and everyone affected by just this insanity. Like obviously there's gonna be a lot of focus on the teacher and the, this six year old that fired the gun, but also just imagine all these tiny young children watching a six year old shoot their teacher. What does that do to your brain at five and six years old? Couldn't even be on the planet for a little more than half a decade before getting some PTSD drilled into your brain. Life is stupid and scary. And then Brazil just had their very own January 6th, except these copycats did it on January 8th. So let me break it down for you. Last October, Brazil's left-wing candidate Lula da Silva wins the presidential election against far-right incumbent Jair Bolsonaro, with Bolsonaro never formally conceding the loss, which left many observers fearing that he was going to attempt a coup to remain in power. It's not only because he's questioned the election system's integrity for years now, but also because he celebrated the military dictatorship from 1964 to 85. But by last week, nothing had happened, and the election results were certified giving Lula the presidency. Though that wasn't completely smooth, you had Bolsonaro supporters blocking roads and setting cars on fire. But that looked like, hey, that's all there is until yesterday happened. Because yesterday you had thousands of people in the capital, Brasilia, marching on the plaza known as Three Powers Square, named so for the three branches of government housed there, the Congress, the Supreme Court, and the presidential offices. So with the state police hopelessly outnumbered, you had hordes of rioters bursting inside all three buildings, finding little resistance. You see them setting fires, knocking police off horseback, using barricades as weapons. Several reports from different outlets reported journalists getting attacked and robbed. You hear them shouting that they're taking their country back. They will not be stopped. Then, draped in the Brazilian flag, they're seen smashing windows and flooding Congress with a sprinkler system. Thankfully, unlike January 6th, neither Congress nor the court were in session and there was no official proceeding that day. But just like January 6th, they seemed unsure what to actually do once they got inside, just kind of breaking things, rifling through papers, posing for photographs, with one official showing the extensive damage done to his office. Meanwhile, you've got police firing back with rubber bullets, pepper spray, tear gas, even showering them from helicopters overhead. And then eventually, the army arrives with much more firepower to begin dispersing the rioters. And at around 9 p.m. local time, over seven hours after the chaos broke out, Brazil's justice minister finally announced the buildings had been cleared. Though notably, the next day, you still had thousands of protesters camped outside the army headquarters waiting for Bolsonaro and the military to launch a coup. But as far as Bolsonaro, apparently he's just hanging out in Florida, which is where he went just over a week ago to avoid attending Lula's inauguration. And also to cool off investigations into his activity as president. Also, as far as Lula, he wasn't at the Capitol at the time, though he did return there after the dust settled to address the nation, calling the rioters fascists and blaming Bolsonaro for encouraging them by stoking election denialism. Like true vandals destroying what they found in front of them. We think there was a lack of security and I wanted to tell you that all those people who did this will be found and punished. They will realize that democracy guarantees the right to freedom and free speech, but it also demands that people respect the institutions created to strengthen democracy. With this issuing an emergency decree, allowing the federal government to take any measures necessary to restore order in the capital through the rest of the month, there are reports now saying that at least 400 people have been arrested with videos showing them being driven away in buses. And as far as Bolsonaro's response to all of this, he was silent for the first six hours of the attack. He was probably at a public just enjoying a good sub. That's like 90% of what I do when I go back to Florida. But then he tweeted that he repudiates Lula's accusations against him. So we'll wait to see what happens from here and the government cleans up the mess you also have people asking, just like with January 6th, why was law enforcement so unprepared given how much clamor there had been on social media leading up to this? But for now, we're gonna have to wait to see if we get answers to that and so much more. But in the meantime, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And that brings us to the end of today's show, except for one thing. With this being the first show of the year, want to set expectations. The Philip DeFranco Show is now five times a week, Sunday to Thursday. And in addition to that, all seven days a week, there will be at least one short uploaded to this channel, along with more international shorts over PDS news clips. Any of the links that you need to get to that content in the description, as well as right here. But as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow. I missed y'all. It feels good to be back. We're going to get through this year together. Also, as promised, I'm about to show you my teeth. Leave if you don't want to see this. Look at this. It's going to be blurry. Oh my God.
<laughs> this one's a little bird beak. Oh.